Welcome everyone. This is Dr. Jaitley, your cardiologist from New York on your favorite website, MuniMeterHealth.com, which is dedicated to educating you about the human heart and its illnesses as we move forwards on our social channels. So thank you for your enthusiastic support and associating on MuniMeterHealth.com. Come one, come all, and to learn, watch, and of course, share with your loved ones. And of course, this is really meant for interns, residents, fellows, and of course, my medical, dear medical students across the world. And thank you again for enthusiastic support that you've shown to really further my cause to freely spread this knowledge to all. Without any further ado, and uh, let's delve into the subject matter. The matter of the subject today is Brugada syndrome. What is Brugada syndrome? And uh, in um, abbreviations, obviously, we'll call it as BS. Now, Brugada syndrome is a classic presentation where an idiopathic form of uh, ventricular tachycardia, which is normally polymorphic here in this setting, occurs in a setting where the ECG will show certain uh, specific abnormalities. One, it will show a right bundle bunch pattern. Now, a lot of ECGs when you do in the emergency rooms and your day-to-day clinical practice will show right bundle branch. So don't get too excited you have diagnosed the Brugada yet. So that's the one finding of the right bundle that you'll see on the ECG. But the more specific to that is the high J point. A high J point that occurs in leads V1 and V3 in the presence of right bundle. Now, if that is present, you have a Brugada syndrome right there in terms of an EKG. Now, if these patients are presenting with syncope, if they are symptomatic, obviously that, that's what forms the Brugada syndrome as a whole because you have to have a clinical syndrome first and then, of course, the EKG findings and the cause of whatever the presentation here is. So patients can present with syncope and will have these changes on the EKG and you have clinched the diagnosis of Brugada right there. Many times you'll just have a right bundle branch pattern and not a high J point, but patients may present with syncope or patients will present with right bundle branch pattern and a high J point, but no syncope. You follow? So, you know, you may have a combination of different uh, uh, ways in which Brugada can manifest. So one, if it is occult, for instance, like only a right bundle branch's pattern is, pay, uh, is uh, <laughs> present and you have a syncope in this individual who's presenting the emergency room, you would like to see if this patient can be provoked to develop a Brugada. But again, I recommend only that it should be done by a cardiologist in a setting with a very controlled setting where you have a crash cart, obviously available, and then you can use a sodium channel blocker, if you will, and uh, use that as a drug of provocation. Now, there are two or three drugs that have been really defined in type 1A uh, class. Because remember, it's a, it's a sodium channel muta- mutant gene. And the gene is called, uh, what is it called? Let me see. It is called uh, sodium channel 5A. And that is the same gene, by the way, which is also responsible for LQT3 QT, gene. Except the site is different, and therefore you don't see the QT prolongation here. So there's no QT prolongation. The gene is the same. And this will be on the boards because they might ask you to match the gene with the abnormality that you see. So if it is SCN5A, just remember that it's automatically it's Brugada syndrome if there is no QT prolongation. But if there is a QT prolongation, then obviously you have to mark as L- LQT. LQT3 as the syndrome. Pardon me, my phone just rang. Anyway, so type 1A drugs are used for provocation. The classic example is Edgmelin. Most of the literature is uh, showing Edgmelin because the half the, because of a very short half-life only for a few minutes. So the patient does not need to be monitored after the provocation. Um, the next one is flaconide, and which is also called, trade name is Tambacore. And then, of course, you have procainamide which is the classic example of uh, type 1A drug. Uh, we tend to avoid the quinidine, which is also type 1A, but we don't want to use that. So edgmelin, flaconide, and procainamide in that order if you use. So flaconide is, of course, more uh, experienced in the United States. We have edgmelin more in Europe as well as in the United States. But uh, as I said, it's a very short half-life, so edgmelin is more preferable. It has to be given intravenously and uh, 
you know, remember, you have to do the continuous ECG monitoring at the same time a crash cart available. And of course, uh, several pairs of hands, including a cardiologist who is supervising it. So because remember, you do not want to provoke a provoke a VT and not have a setting there to uh, reverse it. So make sure you have a setting to reverse it. So this way, if a VT is provoked, you immediately shock the patient and then bring the patient back into normal sinus rhythm. And then, of course, the treatment plan is ICD. Now, why do we give an ICD? Well, ICD placement is the is the is the procedure of choice. You people have tried uh, drugs, uh, medications, uh, but none of them are as uh, sufficiently preventing the sudden cardiac death. Remember, you're talking about sudden cardiac death, so the so the ICD is the procedure of choice. Now, a lot of people have decided to even do EP studies, but that is still controversial, and it has I think it has a failing role. And at this point, if somebody's presenting with syncope and ECG with uh, these abnormalities, I think an ICD is warranted right away. Okay, without any further ado. Of course, you have to have no structural heart disease. Remember, these patients, they are their echo is totally normal. Why? Because they do not have any structural heart disease. And that's what is misleading because it's very, very difficult to diagnose in these patients who present with a normal echo, have a syncope and a right mental branch pattern. What do you do? So a provocative test could be justified, but then again, if somebody's presenting with syncope and a J point elevation in V1, V3. Now let's see what an EKG looks like. Now, if you were to do an EKG, this is what it will look like. Normally the ECG in V1, we're talking about V1 and V3, remember. Okay, so in V1, you will have uh, obviously a P wave here, and this will be your um, QRS. But in a setting of Brugada, what will happen is you'll have a P wave and then obviously this Q and then you have a uh, coving. You see how the coving occurs? So that is in V1 and in V3 it is a, a V2. Uh, it'll be a similar pattern of course and then you have you see how the V2 is coving. This coving is abnormal. This coving that's occurring is abnormal. So that's V2 and then the V3 will also have a similar pattern of P wave and then a QRS prolonged and a little bit of a V3 which is also showing that coving. So these covings, as we call it, the doming of the the doming of the uh, J point here, as you see, that is very very uh, remarkable for Brugada. Again, Brugada was first uh, defined in 1992, and since then, of course, uh, numerous articles, numerous uh, literatures have been uh, published. Uh, for defining Brugada syndrome. As I said, it's uh, involving this particular mutant uh, mutation in the gene of SCN5A, which is also responsible for LQ LQT3, but the suspicion should be high. Remember, these patients are mostly from Southeast Asia. This is another piece of information I just wanted to quickly share. And many of these patients, they die in sleep. So this is another issue because they can die in sleep and therefore it's all the more reasons why I think they need to be thoroughly worked up. So VTs and VFs are the modes of death obviously in these patients because a polymorphic VT will eventually go into VF and that is uh, that leads to sudden cardiac death. So these patients die in sleep and uh, hence a patient if he presents with syncope or she presents with syncope you must must work this patient up thoroughly and of course look at the EKG for any right bundle branch pattern and high J points on V1 and V3 chest leads okay so Brigada syndrome uh, in a nutshell I gave you uh, all the spiel here and again uh, stay tuned and uh, uh, more coming uh, your way through my videos and uh, of course moneymeterhealth.com is your free website. Uh, please continue to associate all your interns, resident fellows and your medical students for quick uh, video vignettes on this and I hope uh, if, this if this question is on the exam you will uh, f you will pass that question with flying colors. Okay, okay looking forward to seeing you again on my next video vignette. All right, this is Dr. Jaitley. So